Welcome back to Burn Peak. I'm Seth, and today we're gonna be doing something a little bit different, but kind of the same. Now, I feel great right now because I just came back from a ride with the Porters. It was awesome, I'm energized, and now I get to do what people love doing after the ride, tinker with my bike, and I got a bunch of cool and interesting products to tinker with. Now, first up, from the makers of Sticky Fingers, miles wide, Cable Buddies, and this is really cool. These Cable Buddies are made to hold your hoses and cables in place instead of a zip tie, and they come in different colors, which I like for flip bike, because we're always trying to color coordinate things, so let's put some on my bike. Let's try the orange ones first. So we'll put the big side on the brake hose. That snaps in nice. Small one on the shift cable. All right, I really like these. This is sort of a one size fits all solution. They seem to hold really well. They have several other popular colors for bikes today. And what I really like about them is they're reusable. If you're redoing your cables, taking things apart, adjusting things, you don't need to cut a zip tie and put a new one on there. And they look a little more official than a zip tie. Zip ties you know, they look like zip ties. So I'm a big fan of these. They're not expensive. They seem to work well and really cool product. Another good one for miles wide. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is already on my bike, Fidlock. You guys have probably seen it before. It's these water bottles that snap into place with a magnet and then they don't come off and then you gotta twist it to get it back off. And Fidlock did make a new bigger bottle that I like and it's got a cover on the top, but that's not what I'm gonna talk about from Fidlock. They have something else. Fidlock actually makes a phone case and it's got a bike mount and I wanna try that out because I really liked that quad lock case because it stayed on the bike really good, but it protruded from the back. This one is completely flat and so I'm curious if it holds onto the phone as well does seem like a very nice case. It's got this felt on the inside. It's really sturdy, actually nicer than the case I have right now. For the iPhone Pro Max Ultimate, this is a tight case, that's good. Test number one, how do the volume buttons feel? Ooh, nice and easy to push, nice and clicky. Doesn't have anything protruding from it, which is nice. Let's see how the mount works. This looks complicated. Okay, so I guess this piece Oh, it's magnetic. Okay, that seems, I don't know. We're gonna have to send something to find out. Let's install it. Okay, so how do I get this off? Like it, I can literally lift up the bike by this. Go underneath it and I, oh, so I just push this thing down and it comes right off, it lets the air out. You just drop the phone in place and it's done. And then you can open up trail forks, get your maps on there, record your ride. So you know what we do with phone cases here. Okay, that worked. Like I sent wall rides, rock gardens, wasn't even close to coming off. So let's go into the shop and just look at it a little bit closer because I have some feedback. So, <laughs> not many critical things to say about it. I mean, it's like the slimmest phone case you can possibly get that clips to a bike. And this is pretty small, low profile, not the coolest looking thing, but if you wanna take it off, it's just one pinch bolt. One downside of this, and it's same with quad lock, it doesn't work with a wireless charger. So is this gonna be my new phone case? Well, maybe we have one more phone case to review. So this company, Snow, Snow, what is it called? I was looking at it like this but it's actually like this. It's called mouse. All I'm interested in is the phone case. I wanna see if it's better than the Fidlock one. So, looks similarly slim, similarly well built. If I have to choose between the two of them, it's a tough call. I kinda like the Fidlock one better because it's just smooth here. There are these little holes in the bottom of this. Now we've got their mount, and their mount doesn't work with a suction cup and a magnet. It works with these little clips. So you kinda line them up, 
Now it's on there and then you squeeze these little tabs in to get your phone off. It does appear to have a magnet on it to help it find it. So you go like this, sort of finds it and you clip it in. That's cool. Okay, so this is one of those mounts that can put it kind of out in front of your bike. And it's got a little tool free tightening knob. So that's pretty quick and easy. Love the positioning of it. It does appear to be really solid. We're gonna test that. What I don't like about it is it's a lot harder to put on than the Fidlock, even with the little magnet that they have there. See, if you go like this, it sort of self-centers and then you can push it down. Still not as easy as the Fidlock. You can literally just toss that on there and it just suctions itself in place. Let's see if this holds in place like the Fidlock. was great. Worked flawlessly, just like the Fidlock, but it fits a little bit tighter to the handlebars. It doesn't move around as much, and it's it's in a better position. It's a little further forward. If I'm gonna choose which case to use, it's actually gonna be a difficult decision. Okay, so which one am I gonna choose? Which one's gonna be my new phone case? You know, I would choose either of them over quad lock and quad lock was the best thing out there, but then all phones started coming with wireless charging. This is nice and low profile, works with wireless charging. Now, because the Fidlock uses this magnetic piece, it actually doesn't work with wireless charging. So all other things considered equal, I'm gonna choose the mouse, but they're both pretty much the best way to mount your phone to your bike. So the next one, the Aura Ring. It is a fitness tracker. Those of you who know me know I don't record my rides, I don't use Strava, I don't wear an Apple Watch. I'm like really resistant to all these things, but Eric Porter convinced me to get one of these and I'm mainly using it to track my sleep. Over the last year, my sleep has been the thing negatively impacting my health the most. And if you have a bad night of sleep, you snap on people, you make bad decisions, you don't work to your fullest potential, you make mistakes, it's terrible. And this has sort of gamified my sleep to the point where it's just getting better and better and better. And I have this to thank for sort of giving me the data and showing me how bad it really was. But of course this works for a lot of other things besides sleep. If you go on a ride, you don't have to press a button or anything. It'll just detect it and they'll say, hey, were you bike riding? Tracks how many calories and steps you do throughout the day, like any other fitness tracker. I'm sure you're familiar with it, but it's so low profile that I will actually wear it. Now, if I had to press a button to start recording something, or if I had to wear a big bulky watch or anything like that, it would be totally off the table. But now that I just have all the data there, it's positively impacting my life. I just wear on the same finger I would wear my wedding band, and so I'm not really adding anything to my life. I'm actually getting used to riding with it, which I thought would be pretty difficult with a ring. You only have to charge it like once a month. You just plug it in for 30 minutes and it's charged. I never ever thought I would wear a health and fitness tracker, but I do because this one's just that low profile. And in a lot of ways, it's helped me gamify my health in such a way that I try to do better the next day. And I'm looking forward to getting a lot healthier, getting better sleep. The next product we're gonna review I've been testing for about two years. They're on my feet. This is the Ride Concepts Vice, and it's my second pair. I absolutely love these. I wore 510s for the longest time, and then something changed about them. The next version of it just didn't feel as good. These ones are just perfect. Now, the bottom looks a lot different than other flat pedal shoes, but I guess the spikes kind of fall in here and hold it in place. I have no problems with my feet moving around. Shoes are a really personal thing, but Eric also turned me on to this. He said, you gotta try these shoes, you gotta try these shoes, and he was 100% right. These are not only a good riding shoe, to me they just feel like a really good shoe. I build in them, I hike in them, I ride in them, I do a lot of things on and off my bike, and so that's why I got the version that's kind of more casual. Now, like I said before, shoes are a really personal thing, and so what works for me might not work for you, but certainly works for me, works for Eric, works for his kids, and I certainly like them better than 510s, which were sort of ubiquitous 
as a flat pedal shoe. Now, another funny thing that Ride Concepts makes are these sandals. They're just slip-ons, and I don't know if they're really intended for riding bikes with. I don't think they are, but it looks like this would be pretty good on a pedal. Uh, let's try them. Not advisable. They stuck to the pedals though. So this next product is from Tilt Industries and as you can see, it's a bike repair stand and we're gonna be perfectly honest with you, it's not the best bike repair stand I've ever used. The Park Tool one is way better. However, bike stand is almost like a bonus in terms of what this does. This does three things that I'm gonna show you, but let's set it up on the wall first. Okay, I didn't like put bolt holes in my wall for this, but I have it like kind of rigged up against the frame of the garage door opener, so keep that in mind. Now you can see how it works as a bike rack. You can put your bike here and it goes against the wall and so you have an apartment or a garage or somewhere that you wanna save space, you have a bike rack, but it's not only a bike rack, it's also a repair stand. You don't have to take it off the wall, check this out. And now you have a repair stand wherever you are. So let's say you have an apartment and you like to go riding and your bike takes up like so much space. Now you have it mounted to the wall. You have a repair stand. You're not tripping over anything. And then if you really want to save space, this whole thing folds against the wall. But that's not all. Ah! This is not how it's supposed to work. But when it goes on the ground, it's now a balance trainer. I know that as a manual machine and a friend of mine, Joe, Mr. Tonka, invented it and it was cool when he did, but now, uh, let me show you what it is. I have mixed feelings about manual trainers. Okay, so the way a balance trainer works, manual trainer, manual machine, whatever you wanna call it, you put it in here, then they give you a ratchet strap. So now we have our wheel secured. You wanna disconnect the chain so that you can't put back pressure on the pedal to help yourself artificially balance. And now, we're doing Manual training, whoa! So one thing Tilt Industries got right was their marketing. They're not calling it a manual trainer. They're not calling it a manual machine. They're calling it a balanced trainer. So the concept is if you use this regularly, you're gonna build up the strength of flexor muscles and different fitnessy things like that. Dude, if, if you don't have a place to practice manuals, you don't have a place to ride your bike. And then you don't need a bike rack, you don't need a repair stand, you don't need anything. Like, that's my opinion about manual trainers. If you find it fun, or if you think it's gonna give you more confidence, that's one thing. But I think this makes a pretty good wall mount for a bike. It's pretty convenient to have the repair stand there. And it's pretty cool that they have it all into one package that's really portable. So if you live in an apartment, you live in a city, you have limited space, this could be pretty cool. But I'm personally not looking for a balance trainer, but the other things it does I think are pretty cool. So the next product is Shut the Frig Up Bike. That's exactly what it's called, STFU bike. It was invented by Chris Kavarik up in Whistler, Canada. And so there's pretty good credibility behind this product and a lot of people swear by it. There's a version for different downhill drive trains and there is a trail version, which we're gonna test today. It's supposed to stop your chain from slapping around and making noise. Let's go install it. The way this works, is your chain is actually gonna run through these and then it's going to cinch down here and as the chain shifts, it's actually going to move through here. I'm gonna show you. Okay, so it appears you can shift all the way through without it touching, but if you're going over bumps on the trail, it's always hitting into this rubber guide and not into your chain stay. Now, I don't have a lot of problems with chain slap, however, Maybe if I ride with this, I'll notice that things are a little bit more serene. Let me send this down the rock garden and see what it feels like. 
that was really quiet. And I can tell a lot of thought went into this. It's well designed. I don't see it going anywhere. It's gotta be good for your drivetrain, just keeping it from moving around so much. And I think I could get used to the reduced noise. So time will tell, but for now, I'm gonna say that's definitely worth 35 bucks. So that's it, a bunch of unique mountain bike products that you don't see every day. I always love checking out these products and letting you guys know what I think. If you like this video, there's more just like it in the playlist below. I hope you learned something today, and if you didn't, I hope you at least found it entertaining. And if you like this jersey, you can also get this in the link below. Thanks for riding with me today, and I'll see you next time.